Hey there guys, welcome to this video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we are going to prove the Gauss-Markov theorem. So that that is what we're going to do in this video, right? So, so let's go ahead and get started. So before we go ahead and prove this theorem, let me just give you a summary what it entails. So what exactly is the uh, is the Gauss-Markov theorem, right? What exactly uh, it's this theorem. Well, this theorem says that uh, if you have your OLS, uh, if you have your OLS uh, regression, if you have your OLS estimators, uh, if the following conditions are satisfied. So what are the conditions? The condition number one is of linearity. So I mean to say that uh, the, the regression is a linear regression, right? Uh, the parameters are linear, right? So the parameters are supposed to be linear rather than uh, the regressors. So the equation is uh, linear. So I'd say y is equal to beta x plus e. Uh, second thing is that it assumes strict exogeneity. So that is what something that it uh, it assumes. So what is the meaning of this, this uh, assumption? The meaning is that the expected value of the error term given the regressors is equal to zero. So that is what we mean by strict exogeneity. That means uh, the error term are not, the, the expected value of the error term is actually going to be zero. Another thing that we predict, that we assume is no multicollinearity, right? So what do you mean by multicollinearity? That means uh, the regressors are not linear combinations of each other or the regressors are not perfectly correlated with each other and the next thing that we assume is homoscedasticity we assume homoscedasticity the meaning of that is the the variance of the error term or the uh, second moments of the error term uh, is something which is a constant right so this is something that we assume right so there you go. All right. So we assume these four assumptions. So, so the, the Gauss-Markov theorem says that given these assumptions, the OLS estimator, the OLS estimator beta hat, so the, uh, the estimator of this beta is beta hat, is blue. When I say blue, I mean to say that it's the best linear unbiased estimator. Right. So it's the best linear unbiased estimator that is uh, the that's what cos markov theorem says so what do you mean by best linear unbiased estimator i mean to say that it's it's unbiased so when i say unbiased i mean to say the expected value of beta hat given x is actually going to be equal to beta right so that's the first thing that gauss markov theorem says that and it's the best when i say it's the best i mean to say the variance of beta hat given x it's the least among all other estimators. So the variance of beta hat given x is the least among all other estimators, right? So that I mean to say, so let's say if you have, uh, if you have two estimators, let's suppose you have beta hat, which is our OLS estimator, right? And let's suppose you have another estimator, beta tilde, uh, and uh, let's say that is some other linear estimator, some other linear estimator, right it is also unbiased but it's not OLS right so I mean so the Gauss Markov theorem says that the variance of beta hat will always be greater than the way sorry it's always going to be less than the variance of beta tilde because given x because this is going to have the least variance all the time now this is what we have to prove right now right so this is what we have to prove Okay, so so let's go ahead and prove that. So I think I have set up the question for you. The, the I have set up the problem for you. The problem is that we have uh, two regressors. We have uh, beta hat, which is our OLS regressor, right? Uh, and uh, we have our beta tilde, which is some other linear regressor, right? It's some other linear regressor, which is unbiased. So they both are unbiased. We know that, right? So when I say that they are unbiased, I mean to say that the expected value of beta hat given x is actually going to be actual beta, where uh, our linear so our, our, our linear function is this. This is the population parameter. So this is what I mean to say. And the expected value of beta tilde given x is also equal to beta, right? So what we have to prove, we have to prove that the variance of beta, beta hat 
given x is going to be less than the variance of beta tilde given x. Right? So this is something that we have to prove right here. Okay? So, all right. And uh, something that we already know that the variance of uh, beta hat given x, that is the variance of the OLS estimator, it's uh, nothing but uh, the sigma square into x prime x inverse, right? So this is the variance of the OLS estimator. There is a separate video on that. You should see that. However, how did we prove uh, that the variance of, of an OLS estimator is that? Another thing is that the OLS estimator, it's the value of OLS estimator is x prime x inverse and uh, x y right so this is the value of ols estimator right okay uh, anyhow so let's these are the things that we know right so these are the things that we know okay so these are the things that we know and uh, now let's try to find let's try to prove this expression here okay so so since beta tilde is something that is uh, so since beta tilde, it's it's something that is unbiased and it's a linear estimator. So let's say that beta tilde is actually equal to some number c into y, right? So because it's a linear estimator, so that's what we're saying, that let's say that is equal to c uh, plus y, right? And I'm going to, so just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to say this thing is equal to a, right? Just for the sake of convenience, I'm going to say a is equal to x prime x inverse x right so this is equal to a okay so this is what we have right and uh, let's say so this is a and this is c here and uh, let's say that c is equal to some some constant d plus a right it could be plus or it could be minus it could be anything i'm just saying that c is equal to some constant d plus a because you can clearly see from here that beta hat is equal to a times y, isn't it? Beta hat is actually equal to a times y and beta tilde is c times y. So let's say that the difference between a and c is the d, right? So d is the one which makes, which gives the difference, okay? So now, uh, so let's do a little bit of algebra here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute c as uh, d plus a. That is what I'm going to do. I'm going to substitute c as d plus a and this is what I get, right? And the next step from here it's going to be beta tilde is equal to dy plus ay, right? So this is what we have, dy plus ay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to in, uh, use this y. I'm going to say beta hat is equal to d. y is equal to beta x plus uh, error term. So that's beta x plus the error term plus ay. Then I have beta hat is equal to d dxb plus de plus ay now there's something that you sh there's something that we're going to use now is that the expected value of beta tilde is equal to beta right so this is something that we are going to use okay so another thing that uh, that is there is that is there is what is ay ay is nothing but beta hat so so technically beta tilde is dxv plus d error term plus a y okay so if i find the expected value of beta tilde that will actually be equal to the expected value of this whole thing that would be dxb uh, plus expected value of uh, so d into expected value of the error term uh, plus uh, a y a y is nothing but beta hat right something that I said here that is expected value of beta hat now since expected value of beta expected value of beta tilde is equal to beta and expected value of beta hat is equal to beta that means this whole term should actually be equal to zero in expectations and we already know that the expected value of uh, the epsilon is zero right so that is something that makes this expression zero which doesn't mean that d is zero now dxb should actually be zero so that means we can prove that we can say that dx beta is actually equal to zero right now if i put this as zero if i eliminate this term i get beta tilde to be actually equal to dx beta plus sorry dx beta is zero so beta tilde is actually equal to d epsilon plus uh, plus beta hat Right, so this is what I have. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract beta from both sides. I'm going to say beta 
tilde minus beta is actually equal to d epsilon plus beta hat minus beta right so this is what I have okay so now this is equation number one okay let's just keep it right here this is equation number one that is beta hat minus beta is equal to d epsilon plus beta hat minus beta so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna find beta hat minus beta now what exactly this is right okay so I'm so I hope you have written this equation down all right so I'm moving on to the next slide this is gonna erase okay so now what is beta hat minus beta so that is equal to so what is beta hat beta hat is x prime x inverse x prime y right so this is or let's just call it x y minus beta so this is uh, beta hat minus beta now I'm gonna open up this y here so beta hat minus beta is actually equal to x prime x inverse uh, x into y is something which is beta x plus the epsilon term minus beta so this is equal to x prime x uh, inverse x and then you have a beta x so it's gonna become x prime beta plus x prime x uh, inverse x epsilon minus beta now as you can clearly see that this is the inverse of this so it cancels out right so this is what it cancels out and uh, you have beta plus I'm gonna say this thing is a because this thing is something which is a a epsilon minus beta you can see that the beta and beta cancels out so that means beta hat minus beta is a epsilon so if I put that in equation one what was my equation one guys my equation one was uh, beta hat sorry my equation one was beta tilde minus beta is actually equal to d e minus uh, beta so d e plus beta hat minus beta that was my equation one right so what I'm gonna do is instead of beta hat minus beta I'm gonna write a e so here I'm gonna write a e so I have beta tilde minus beta is actually equal to d e plus a e right so now things will get simple for you so beta hat minus beta tilde minus beta is actually equal to epsilon into d plus a so this is equation number two all right okay now let's get let's get to some real stuff now we have to find the variance of beta tilde which will actually be equal to the variance of beta tilde minus beta because if you subtract a term from a variable the, the variance does not change so that is actually equal to the variance of this so variance of beta hat minus beta is actually equal to the variance of epsilon term into d plus a so what I'm doing now is I'm replacing this with this because that is the value of this now if this constant comes out of the variance something that you should know that variance of ax is actually equal to a square variance of x right so that means when this comes out you have d plus a into variance of epsilon into d plus d prime plus a prime so so this is this is how you square a matrix so this is what it is right now let's try and multiply them up so this is going to be variance of epsilon so d times d is d d prime you have d prime a you have d a prime and you have a prime a right so this is what you have right okay now uh, from here this is something that we can derive so this is there so what 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 is d prime a right so what is d prime a so d prime a it's nothing but d uh, you can call it prime you don't want to call it prime I'm just saying what is d a right so that is x prime x uh, inverse uh, into x that's what's the value of a s and what is d x something that we proven we proved that d x beta is equal to zero now beta is not equal to zero right so that means d x has to be equal to zero so that means that d a is equal to zero similarly we can say that d prime a is zero and d a prime is zero right so so that means using this so i'm going to repeat that again so d a is d i've just opened up a here which is x prime x inverse x that is equal to zero now in here 
this is uh, d into x is actually going to be 0. Why? Because uh, d into, we just proved that dxb was 0, so dx beta was 0. Over here, you have dx and beta is not equal to 0. That means dx is actually equal to 0. So that is what we have. So that means uh, this thing is 0 and this thing is 0. So what do we get? We get variance of, so we get variance of uh, beta tilde minus beta is actually equal to variance of epsilon times what did we have we have uh, we just have d d prime plus a a prime this is what we have all right now what exactly is a a prime so a a prime is just x uh, x x prime inverse x that is what the value of a is and then you just have to multiply x x prime inverse into x now you can see these both x will cut these both x so we'll just will we'll just be left we're just left with x x prime inverse that is what we're left with right similarly what is the value of uh, uh, what is the value of d d prime so let's just keep it like that so that means that the variance of beta tilde minus beta is actually equal to the variance of epsilon hat now what is the variance of epsilon hat? Something that we already said that that is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse uh, into uh, d d hat which, which is there plus uh, which, is, which is equal to I'm sorry let's just keep it so variance of epsilon hat uh, that is equal to uh, x prime x inverse right so you can clearly see we can clearly state that d d prime is something which is positive right so this is something which is positive right i think this should not be here right okay so this is the variance uh and also so so that means this over here is something which is positive that means that uh, that means that the variance of beta tilde that means that the variance of i, I forgot to put given x given x uh, that means that the variance of beta tilde minus beta given x is actually or it's actually going to be greater than the variance of beta hat minus beta given x because this over here is the variance of beta uh, because this times this is going to be that the variance of beta hat minus beta because the variance of epsilon is just sigma square and uh, so if I, if I just open this up, I'll just show it to you. That means that the variance of beta tilde minus beta given x is actually equal to epsilon square into d d prime plus x inverse x, x prime x inverse. So that is equal to this square into d d prime plus this square into x prime x inverse. Now this is nothing but that the variance of beta hat minus beta given x plus something which is positive right that is equal to the variance of beta tilde minus beta given x so we have proven that the variance of beta tilde is always going to be greater than the variance of beta hat no matter what happens right so that means that beta hat which is our OLS estimator is always going to be the best linear unbiased estimator fine so I hope you got that guys uh, so I hope you got it. It was it was a long video. It was a long proof, but uh, I, I I think I've covered everything right. So I hope you understood it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Right, I appreciate it. And uh, just give us your uh, valuable feedback on this email address that is support at perfectscourse.org. Also, uh, explore our website that is perfect-course.com. We're going to be coming up with more videos. Uh, and also give us your valuable like on this Facebook page and uh, follow us on Twitter and other social media platforms. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.